the Joe Rogan experience. So they hire the guy, the best friends of the lab to investigate the lab. Right. It's like hiring Robert Kardashian in to investigate OJ. You know what right. I mean? It's like, right. and, and, and when they interview these guys on TV, they always say the same thing. Don't you want the best friends of the lab to interview the lab? Isn't that, we know the most about it. We're doing the research. It would be like Robert Kardashian being like, I know OJ really well. You know, let me do the investigation. I'll figure out the truth. I'll get to the bottom of this. Right. So anyway, so they go to the lab for three hours, talk to their best friends, look them straight in the head. Did you do it? No, we didn't do it. Okay, case closed. And then they concluded in their WHO report that the lab theory is very unlikely. We don't need to look into the lab. Case closed. And everybody was like, oh, that doesn't make any sense. We can't have that. These guys have a conflict of interest. Their careers are tied to this lab. If the lab were found to be guilty again, we don't know. I don't know. You don't know. Peter Daszak doesn't know. Well, maybe he knows, but I don't think he knows. You know, their legacy, this entire project of $200 billion, $200 million, rather, to dig up viruses all over the world would be kaput. It would have to necessarily be stopped, this whole industry. Okay, now here's the part where I'm going to get a little controversial. Are you ready? Mm -hmm. Is it okay? Sure. Okay. So if I've gotten you that far, again, just to say that I don't blame anyone out there for having this notion that like this lab accident theory is kind of a kooky thing that like was cooked up by Mike Pompeo or something like that. I get why you think that. But now Trump's not, he's not here anymore, right? We don't have to argue about Trump anymore, hopefully, ever again, right? And we can just look at the piles of circumstantial evidence. And there's a plenty of circumstantial evidence that it could have come, there's some circumstantial evidence that it could have come from nature. I feel that the lab theory has more compelling circumstantial evidence because, again, they were doing that kind of research. They also, there was a huge cover up and the virus database went mysteriously offline somehow in December 2019. There's also the evolution of the virus itself, right? That it That's what Robert, so Robert Redfield, who was the CDC director at the time, a trained virologist, he says, I took a look at this virus and I concluded that it is so p p powerful that it, m it must have been evolved in a lab setting, and he pointed to the gain-of-function research, and they called him a racist, a conspiracy theorist, and all the rest. Yeah. All right. Now, here's the controversial part. The, the godfather of that industry, the head of the, the, of the pyramid, is a guy you may have heard of called Anthony Fauci. I d I've heard of that guy. Right? Yeah. Do you want to hear more? Yeah. Okay. So, Anthony Fauci, the hero of the pandemic is the most important person in the world of gain-of-function research there is. In other words, he is, and not just him, there's Francis Collins at the NIH and some other people, but basically he, he is the one dispersing all of the grants for this. He is the one who pushed to turn it back on after Obama turned it back off. That's a whole other crazy story. He turned it back on without really consulting the White House. That's breaking news, never been reported. Just broke some news on your show right really? now. Really? Yes. Uh, he consulted the Office of Science and Technology Policy, which is like a part of the White House, but he didn't, uh, you know, the, the White House put a pause on it and then he like undid the pause. It, the details are a little sketchy. I'm not saying that he did anything necessarily wrong or illegal. I'm just saying that a lot of people that I know inside the Trump administration had no idea this had turned back, turned back on. He found a way to turn it back on in the mess of the Trump administration because the Trump administration is full of a bunch of clowns, right? So at the end, you could get stuff done if you just knew how to work the system. Fauci is the head of that system. Why? What was his incentive? That's his, that's everything, that's his whole career. That's, so he, what he would say, and I, to be fair, again, to be perfectly fair to him, He's trying to predict the next pandemic. He thinks this is the way that you predict the next pandemic. By digging up all these viruses, we've got to dig up more and more viruses and play around with them because we're going to find how they evolve. Then we're going to come up with therapeutics and vaccines and all this stuff. But there were no therapeutics. Right, but we did have vaccines quicker than most because the DARPA funded a, a program to make our mRNA vaccines 10 years ago that actually worked. You know, that was a military-funded program, but we can get to that in a second. But that's not related to this. Right. So the, my, my, that's, that's, that's a very fair observation. In other words, the, the $200 million program to predict and preempt the pandemic failed to predict and, and preempt the pandemic. But, but, but it may have also sparked the pandemic. But may have sparked. But, but exactly. here's my, my, my question. When I read all about the research they were doing, I didn't see what they were doing to prevent it. I just saw they were what they were doing was examining these viruses and trying to find out how they work and trying to see what happens when they get more virulent. But what right. I didn't see is that the invention of therapeutics. Or the I, I hear what you're saying. I'm 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 willing to give these scientists the benefit of the doubt that their honest goal was to create 
do good science to prevent and predict. Oh, I am too. That's but, not what I'm saying. What I'm, I, don't, I don't know if they produce therapeutics. What I, I'm saying, but did they yeah. have a lack of funding in that department? Was all the funding I don't know. I, I, you know, allocated I, towards examining the viruses themselves and not towards developing some sort of uh, a therapeutic? Uh, I, I don't. It's you a don't good know. question. Okay. I don't know the answer to that question. Okay. But what I do know is that. The majority of their time was spent digging up viruses in the wild and bringing them back to these labs. But Fauci, yeah. when he started it back up, did he start it back up with the intent to just uncover more information so we'd be better informed? His argument was, this is vital research. The longer we pause it, the more danger that we're in. I'm trying to save the world. And so we got to turn this stuff back on because this is how we're going to save the world from the next pandemic, which I'm sure he believed. I'm sure a lot of these people believed. But right. there is another school of thought out there. And the other school of thought is, hey, instead of taking $200 million to dig up viruses and make them more dangerous, why don't you put that money into monitoring and surveillance in the places where the bats are? In other words, if you put resources where the outbreaks are likely to occur, then you could squelch them when they pop up because actually viruses change every day and, pre and trying to predict the pandemic is a fool's errand. That's another scientific school of thought. That's not the one that Fauci's in. Right. But, but the reason that there's no debate about this is because the NIH and NIAID structure are such that everyone gets funded by them. They're funding everybody. So if you are in the field of virology, there's a 99.99% chance that you're getting money from Anthony Fauci in one way or another. Your grants, your careers, your chairmanships. So there's no, there's no dissent allowed in that community. I learned a lot about the scientific community and the virology no community. No dissent over the last allowed. Years. So no debate? I talk, I talk to scientists all the time who say, I, I think this gain-of-function research is really dangerous. I can't say anything. I'm going to lose my grant. Jesus. I'm going to lose my career. This happens to me all the time. And when Robert, Robert Redfield spoke up because he's a big macher and he's a head of the, head of the CDC, he said, it, it's my opinion that it came from the lab because he can't declassify a bunch of classified information on CNN. Right. But he's talking about what he knows, right? It's obvious to everyone who's in the know that he's seen the intelligence and he's not just talking out of his ass. He's not some Joe Schmo virologist. He was the head of the C CDC. He's seen all of the secret, secret stuff, even the stuff I never get, got, a, got a whiff of. And he, and he went on TV and said, hey, uh, I think this probably came from the lab. We should probably look at the lab. And he was called a racist and a conspiracy theorist. And, but by foolish but what people. He's saying, but Fauci's yeah. disagreed with him publicly. Right. So that's the thing. So if you, if you just think about it, just for once, again, I, I'm begging people out there just like, think again. Whatever you thought about the lab accident, it doesn't matter. Whatever you tweeted in 2020, March, it doesn't, nobody cares, right? And the same thing for the Let media. Let it go, yeah. Because it's all confirmation bias now. Like, oh, I, I, I tweeted this in March 2020 and I want it to hold up. Nobody cares what you tweeted in March 2020. Let's just have a, a yeah, rational a moratorium. conversation about what are the likely ways we got into this horrible crisis that we're in. And so for people in the know who are listening to Robert Redfield, it's clear that he's calling out Anthony Fauci. In other words, he's pointing to the gain-of-function research, which he knows, because he's the head of the CDC, reports up to Fauci. He knows that, right? Right. But he's not saying that, because even that's too hot for him to say. It's hot, and, to, and the scientists are not going to say that either. Now, you have a lot of people sort of on the, on the right-wing media and the MAGA media who've been saying that for a long time, but they don't have any credibility with the mainstream media. And I'm, I'm just like in that weird space where like I wrote a book about you know, U.S.-China relationships, so I had all these this good reporting, and I'm not MAGA media because I criticize Trump in my columns all the time. So I am mainstream media, but I'm saying we should look at the lab, and it messes with people's minds because they're like, oh, why, why is he doing this? Why is Josh pushing the lab? I'm not pushing the lab. Access That's either. the problem today with these rigid ideologies. Exactly. Everyone's on teams. It's all yes. factional. Yes. But I don't care. I don't even care if, if the lab accident theory is true. If the natural origin theory is true, then great. I will lead the ticker tape parade celebrating Peter Daszak and Anthony Fauci through, down, you know, Fifth Avenue. I'm, I'm happy to do that. All I'm saying is that we have to also look into this lab, these labs rather, and that we can't hire the best friends of the lab to look into the labs because right. they have a clear conflict of interest and they fucked it up already. Catch new episodes of the Joe Rogan Experience for free only on Spotify. Watch back catalog JRE videos on Spotify, including clips easily seamlessly switch between video and audio experience on spotify you can listen to the jre in the background while using other apps and can download episodes to save on data cost all for free spotify is absolutely free you don't have to have a premium account to watch new jre episodes you just need to search for the jre on your spotify app go to spotify now to get this full episode of the joe rogan experience